today on Be Something Wonderful, fastest and easiest way to change and manifest anything in your life. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Big video for you today. I spoke with two of you creators who found us from watching the video that we released, I think now over a week ago, maybe a little longer, how robotic affirmations literally made, made me an overnight success. You found us through that video. You had not heard of us before that video. So I wanna talk about this because they both had these interesting views and experiences of robotic affirmations. I wanna talk all of, about all of this today and more. And, and one of them said, well, Tom, I just want the fastest and easiest way to create the life that I want, to, to change and manifest the, my life. And so I'm gonna talk about this like we never have before. This is interesting. This, I had a laugh with this particular subscriber because she said, you know, Tom, I, 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 on one of your videos, I started binge watching them, and uh, you, you were talking about uh, one client or one um, creator who said that the coach was telling him to F, tell 3D reality to F off and just affirm it robotically. And, and again, there's, there's some power in that, but not really in that, all right? The power is in claiming a new reality, whether you're robotically affirming it or just saying, I am that, and then denying anything that doesn't align with that because it's not your preference, right? Because she goes, I was laughing when you said, how did that work for you? I think I said that in one of the videos because it didn't work for this person. Right, they, create, they said all hell break, broke loose, right? And that, they, they, that it got worse and worse as they kept telling 3D. Because 3D's not out there. There's no reality outside of you. And, and if that's true, then robotically affirming is okay, but unless you decide that you're that reality, then it doesn't matter how much you repeat something, how much you return to some mantra or affirmation. Nothing changes until you do. So she goes, you know, Tom, I learned about robotic affirming long before YouTubers were even a thing, before YouTube was a thing and YouTubers were a thing. This is way back, I guess. And in many ways, it just makes common sense, right? She always thought robotic affirming or repeating things made sense, that what you repeat and affirm frequently manifests your reality. She goes, but it's been with mixed results, right? Of course because you, it's your mixed, it's your mixed uh, identities, it's your mixed, who am I? Who you believe you are, where we, we get confused, we get mixed up on who we really are. Even my friends and coaches, she's talked with a lot of coaches, I've talked with even the current ones who are out there and that's all they talk about, right? For the last few years, they've only been talking about or mostly robotic affirming, which there's power in robotic affirming. But even my friends and coaches I've talked with admit that admit that it's mixed results. Even the coaches who teach it were admitting that they get mixed results with it. This is powerful what she shared with me. But something about the way you talked about it in this particular video, this just resonated with her in, a, in some way. Not sure why, it just did. I see it differently now. And here's what she said. I wanna share this with you, really powerful statement. But I see me differently now. It's like I'm reborn. Wow, well, that's it, that's everything. Not seeing it differently now, the idea of robotic affirmations or any of that, right? All processes, all processes and techniques work through you as you. You're the one. She goes, I was burnt out on robotic affirmations and other techniques. She goes, it just felt like there's nothing new that all of the YouTubers, and she goes, pardon me, Tom. <laughs> and I go, no worries. She goes, all the YouTubers are talking about things that have been, re that are, they're just recycling things that have been around for dozens and dozens of years. That's true, there's nothing new. But the way you talk about it, the way you, the, the way you can talk about it is always new. And this is what resonated with her. All those YouTubers just repeating what's been out there. 
and talked about for dozens and dozens of years. Well, we moved her like she has never been moved. And I want to share this. And also another uh, person, another creator that I talked with also found us through uh, Robotic Affirming. I want to talk about this, this particular, because I know it will resonate with both of you who are out there. This way, because both of you are going to go, wait a minute, it's about me. No, it's about me. It's about both of you. <laughs> about, about this idea, this whole discussion of robotic affirmations led to what is the fastest and easiest way to change your life, to manifest and, and, and manifest and make changes in your life instantly now, right? And the whole discussion of linear time came up and, and things take time. And I, I think even one of you on the Facebook or on the channel were digging into that. It still takes time. I don't care. Yeah, I understand divine timing, but things still take time. There's still time. Well, that's going to be your reality, that, that you're just defending your own limitations. That's all you're ever going to see through that lens. We're going to talk about this idea today and more. Remember the quote that I just, I think it was just yesterday's video that I, that I, that I was quoting from the movie Next, Nicolas Cage playing this, this uh, character. And that could see two minutes into the future, right? Every time you look at it, he was talking about the future, but the point I was making, the future is the past, it's the present, it's everything. Everything is now. So whatever you're looking at, whenever you're looking at it, it changes because you looked at it and that changes everything. The past, present, and future reality Everything, whether you call it 3D, 4D, or 5D, in your imagination or in the physical, every time you look at it, it changes because you looked at it. And that changes everything. Not because science says so, as I pointed out yesterday. Not because science says so as the proof and evidence of your multidimensional divine nature, right? As I am awareness. Science talks about the ideas of entanglement, superposition, in the holographic universe, the idea that we're all entangled, that we all come from one particle or one source or one substance, the idea that it's superposition, that all realities, all particles or one of all possibilities are one possibility layered over another, superimposed over another, or the idea of a holographic universe, that wherever you are at all, all of you is. You can't divide up that one unity, it's holographic. Just like a hologram, the old holograms, when you cut them, the, Im the whole image appeared in any piece, no matter how small you could cut that hologram up, you could still see the whole image. Not, but it's, that's not the evidence. Science exists because of you as the proof, right? That's just an effect of you. Rather, it's because you say so. You're the one and only reality and proof and evidence of existence. How do you know? Well, Tom, how do I know? Because you can imagine anything, even the death experience, even you making a death transition. But you can't imagine not existing. That's how you know. Because non-existence is impossible. It doesn't exist. That's how you know. There's only the isness of God, the isness of reality of all that is. That's powerful, a powerful way to start today. So let's continue this discussion. Your entire physical experience, past, present, and future, as you call time, change in the changeless reality, experience in the one experience of God, of reality, the one divine mind, is changing every moment because you looked at it. Whew, wow. Because you assumed something, you saw something, your perception, the lens that you see it, changes it. Yes, science talks about it, but science talks about it, but you're the evidence. Your entire physical experience, past, present, and future, is changing in every moment because you looked at it. Your word, your I am awareness, changes everything. It's your awareness because you are aware. This is the person that I think was really digging in. My team sent me some, some content to talk about <laughs> in the videos, and I think that this was one of you. Really digging in the idea that, well, I don't have the house. I don't have the money. I don't have the love I want. I don't have the dream job. I don't have the perfect health. I don't, I don't have in the healing that I desire. Well, that's because you stay in the awareness of I am, I am not yet who and what I desire to be. I do not have what I desire to have. Not yet. That's why your awareness is everything. Every time you look from that 
point, viewpoint, that it takes time, that I don't have it, that it's unfolding in time, that you create that experience. Time is absolutely irrelevant. It's an idea. There's only the eternal now, nothing, and I mean no thing, takes time. It takes awareness. It takes you as I am. That's why Jesus said in the chosen, you, you only need me. It doesn't, you don't need time. You need awareness. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. Go, it shall be done for you as you have believed. In Matthew 8, 13, the healing of the centurion servant. In other words, just say the word and you'll see reality as you choose to see it. You'll see yourself as healed, as whole, as complete, as fulfilled. Not the reality where it's taking time, that it still hasn't come. No matter, you, you, you dig in saying, well, no matter what, it takes time. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're just saying, and your word is reality, so that's what you're going to experience, right? <laughs> that's powerful. Just say the word. Now, this is a powerful verse in Scripture, but it was really the next part of Matthew 8, 13 that is mind-boggling that blows your mind. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. In other words, I'll see myself as whole, as complete, as fulfilled. I'll see my reality as I desire it to be, not as it appears to be in time and space and change. I'll see my past as I would have liked it to be, not as it had, that, that it appears to have been. You see it as you want to see it, Right? And that changes everything. And then you go and it shall be done for you. But you're not going. You're staying there. <laughs> Jesus, your own awareness is saying, go. Go. It shall be done for you. But you're saying, no. No. It, that, that I don't have it yet. That it takes time. I'm going to dig into this limiting. I, I'm going to argue for my limitations. And they're going to be mine because they're my limitations. Do you see it? This is powerful. But here's the most mind-blowing part of Matthew 8, 13. It says, and the servant was healed at that very moment. Wow. Instantly. In the perception that you are that person you want to be, in that, in that awareness that you're already that identity that you want and desire to be, that you already have these things, they're already within you, you're healed, you're whole, you're complete, you're fulfilled. Your limited partial perception and incomplete seeing is healed in that very moment that you say the word, that you're aware that you're already that. Just be aware. It's a choice, right? But I have proof and evidence, and this is what we do, right? We dig in and say, well, but I have proof and evidence that things take time, that you age, that you grow old and die, that it takes time to be the person or identity I desire to be and manifest the people and things that I want. Yes, and you put it there. You create that every time you say it, every time you look as that identity, right? Yet I, I feel that your limited view, right? Your limited view, you feel, <laughs> you feel that your limited view is vindicated when others agree with you. And then you create and manifest evidence of proof of your own limitations. So then you ask others, well, what do you think? What's your experience? Everyone goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it's time. time. Time's there. Everyone agrees with you, right? They all, and then everyone starts digging around that limitation. But that, that's you. They're just reflecting your views. There's no evidence. They're not evidence of anything. They're evidence of your state of being. There's no evidence out there. You can say, no, I have evidence of aging. I have evidence of this. I have evidence of that. That's an experience for sure. That's one experience of infinite experiences. But I have evidence. Well, of course they're going to agree with you because you're reality. And then you dig in and then you, then you hold tighter to your limitations. This is powerful. <laughs> Argue for your limitations and sure enough, they're yours. We're not saying you're not having the experience of those things. We're saying you're the experiencing that gets to determine, that gets to determine what it all means to you. And when you decide what it means, it changes those manifested meanings or those manifested experiences. Do you see, you're the experience that determines what those manifested experiences mean. You are that awareness. 
They're yours, sure enough, as Richard Bach in Illusion said. Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. So, but, and then of course we go on. But you have to, then you go, well, you have to impress the subconscious mind and align your heart and mind so the 3D finally catches up that it takes time. Again, digging into those limitations. There you go again, arguing for and putting, creating and manifesting your own limitations there. You're putting the limitations there. You're creating and manifesting those ideas. They're not coming from out there. They're coming from within you, right? You can say, well, no, that, this book said it and that book said it and people said it a hundred years ago. No, it's all happening now. You get to determine what all this means. Remember, when we talk about impressing the subconscious, what is the subconscious mind? What is, what, what is the heart that scripture talks about? The heart and mind. It's the same. It's the great subconscious. It's the great I am. It's the great divine mind. They're, the heart and mind are the same, in meaning they're always aligned because they're not different. Wow. We're going to talk about this, right? When, we, when, when others talk about aligning the heart and mind, they're talking about the conscious mind as something separate, as some, some, something different than the subconscious. They're both the same. They're all one. So we're talking about aligning your choices with the choice that's already been there, that already exists within that great consciousness that you are. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. Remember, God already said yes. God always says yes. God already, God's already impressed with you. God's saying, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's great subconscious mind saying, I'm impressed. You don't have to keep impressing me. You don't have to perform for God, right? All those processes and techniques, even meditation, even the idea of meditation are for you. They're not for God. God already said yes. You already had God at I am, as we quoted from Jerry Maguire. You had me at hello. You had God already. That great, that, that heart and mind is the divine mind of God. They're one. We create a separate limited experience that we call our conscious mind. That's what most are talking about when they say align the heart and mind. But the heart's already aligned with your mind. You're a center of the divine mind. So the only one that has to align is you. You just got to choose and stay with that choice. Go to the end and stay there, right? So just say the word. All those processes and techniques, even meditation, are for you. They're for your limitations. They're for you arguing for your limitations. To stop arguing with God. Just say the word, God, you, you keep arguing and performing for God. God already said yes, right? Be still and know that I'm God, but really, but really know that I'm God and then be still or meditate or, 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 or imagine or affirm or assume or script or do whatever else you want, right? And then, and then meditate, affirm and, and think and feel and do whatever you desire. Right? It really makes more sense the other way around. I think Rubit Sfera talked about this, this duality teacher, this non-duality teacher, right? Know that I'm a God and then be still. <laughs> it's the other way, right? You don't have to meditate to know you're God. You're already God. That knowing's already within you. The heart knows because the heart is the knowing. It is the awareness. It is the consciousness. It is the great I am. We, they, they, many spiritual teachers and others use that idea that the heart knows, the heart feels and knows. Yes, the heart feels and knows because the heart is source. It is the energy in motion. It is the awareness and the knowledge and the intelligence. It is that self-aware intelligence. And you're the center of it. That's what heart means, to be the center, the heart of, the, of, the, of consciousness, the heart of all of it. You are it. Wow, this is powerful. So let's, let's continue. The subconscious, the great I am, the father of scripture, is already impressed with every thought, with every feeling, with every perception, with every sensation there ever was, is, or will ever be. It contains everything. It's all that is. It doesn't reject anything. That's just made up. It doesn't reject anything you do by not choosing to not choosing to be that person you desire to be, right? It's that non-acceptance. When you look out at, at, at conditions and you don't, I will not accept this. 
all that is is all that is. Accept it. It doesn't mean you agree that that's your identity or that's your preference, but accept its potential, accept its possibility, because all that is is all that is. It rejects nothing because it is everything. It accepts everything, but you don't. So in your non-acceptance, you create all those self-imposed limitations and then all those processes and techniques to drop them and to, to drop them to finally manifest, create and attract the life you desire. When God already gave you everything and said yes anyway, but we create that idea that we have to manifest and create our own reality and attract it. So, so your non-acceptance, you create all those self-imposed limitations, then you argue for them. Then you finally do some processes and techniques and decide to drop them, those limitations, and then you finally manifest and create the life you desire, maybe, or maybe not. It depends where you are, but it's already there. The heart and mind are already and always aligned. I want you to hear this because I don't think we've ever talked about it like we are going to talk about it today because the heart which is the great subconscious, which is consciousness or awareness, which is the only reality, that's what the heart is, the great I am, is the mind, is the great one divine mind of God. Everything else is the circus, as we've said in a few videos now. You, your I am awareness, you are at the heart, in the center of all that is, of the one divine mind, of the heart right, of that one heart or great subconscious, they're the same. So when we talk about alignment, we're really talking about the aligning your choice with, already, with what already exists. Wow. With what already is within you, what, with what already is a reality and staying there in that end, in that choice, that this is me no matter what. This is my desired reality no matter what. This is my preference no matter what. This is powerful today. So there it is, all that is, the Father, the great I am, the great subconscious mind, the one divine mind, the heart that feels and knows. That's the heart. It's the heart, it's the one divine mind, it's all of it. The heart, that, that's why they talk about the heart as that great subconscious center. It's the great conscious mind, it's all that is. There's no separation. You have the conscious mind, what we think of as the conscious mind, which is just the one mind. It's the one mind, that one consciousness, that one awareness, that one heart, that one mind, localized in, in some, on some certain point of focus in awareness, creating the experience of a finite mind. But there is no such thing as a finite mind. There's only one mind in a physical focus, what we call the physical mind. It's a projection and a reflection of time, space, and change. It's nothing out there, it's within you, it's just a focus. So in the now, you're always aligned, you're always one, you're always limitless, and it's always here and now. The conscious physical mind is I am. That's I am. But it's also the heart in the subconscious, it's not separate from any of it. It's just a focus. It's just a viewpoint. It's just a perspective because it's all happening at the same time. Nothing to impress, nothing to align, but, but just choose. Who do you say that I am? As Jesus asked his disciples in Matthew 16, 15, that's the whole meaning of that verse in scripture. The whole metaphysical meaning is who do you say I am? Right? The, yes, you can create the experience of repetition and impression, impressing it and, and, and meditating and all that, but you're already there. Know that I am God and then be still. Then do whatever you want to do. Be whoever you want to be. The conscious physical mind is I am. The subconscious mind is I am. They're, they're all I am. The heart is I am. John in 14.10, Jesus said, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Even that small me that feels separate from reality, the Father is in me. <laughs> and I am in the Father. <sighs> so powerful today. It doesn't take time and processes and techniques. It takes awareness. 
That's what belief is. We're not saying don't do techniques and processes. We're saying whatever you do or don't do, whatever you think and don't think, whatever you feel and don't feel, feel it from that knowing, from that awareness that you are the heart and center of the heart and mind. You are the I am of the great I am. It doesn't take time or process, it takes awareness. But I'm not aware of the things I don't believe. One of you, I think, said that. Well, that makes no sense. If you're aware of it, you believe it. And if you, if you don't believe it, you're not aware of it. <laughs> Do you see? Awareness is belief. The, the, I, the word believe we just make up as an excuse for not living the life of our dreams, for not being the person we always wanted to be. I don't believe it. Do you see it? It's just a, it's just a limitation. You're just arguing for your limitations. In Hebrews 3.19, it says, So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief, because of their not being aware of their choice. Not, be, not choosing and then, and then being aware that they made a choice. <laughs> right? Be aware that you made a choice. You are that. That's what that means. They could not enter what? The divine mind. But you're already centered that divine mind. You're always there. But, you, but, but they could not enter. In other words, you could not be aware that you already have all those things because of your arguing for your limitations, arguing for your unbelief, arguing for your disbelief. This is powerful. I learned about robotic affirmations, imagining, visualizing, affirming, meditating, state akin to sleep, revision, scripting, over 40 years ago. This is another one of you that I spoke with. And it, and it all did nothing. Until she watched that video, she said, it changed my whole perspective of all this. That it was, I was always changing. I was always manifesting. I was always creating. I just wasn't seeing it. It was in my non-acceptance that I couldn't see that I'm already that person I desire to be. She goes, I, was, I really was remembering it wrong. This is powerful, right? It, that's why Jesus said it does nothing. It means nothing without you. That's why it all did nothing, because it can't do anything without you. It does nothing. It means nothing without you and your awareness that you're already that which you desire to be and already have what you want to have. That linear time is absolutely irrelevant. Same with those 40 years. Irrelevant. It's all created by who you are now. And now we get to this idea. That was why this is the fastest and easiest way to manifest anything in your life is to know that you are the heart of it all. To declare and affirm, robotically or otherwise, that you're already that person you desire to be. Whether you script it or assume it or whatever you do, meditate on it. Know that you're God and then be still. Know that you're God and then do whatever you're going to do. Know that you're that multidimensional real you, that higher self, that inner being. You just are. It is. Reality is. Source, the great I am. It's the isness of reality. I am awareness, the one divine mind in reality, the great subconscious, perfectly impressed and aligned. That's the heart and mind. One with the Father, not separate. The Father is in me and I am in the Father. The Son of God and the Father together as that one reality. The heart and mind is always perfectly aligned. Then you have your experience as that I am identity, as scripture called the Son of Man. But it's all now. Your conscious mind or your localized personal, personalized focus, what we call our personalities, right? Your, is part of that great personality of God, that great impersonal God that is all the personalities of all those infinite localized personalized points of consciousness. It's God knowing itself as God. That's what all those infinite points of consciousness are. They're not separate as that one reality, as everything, as everything, everywhere, and all that once. That's you. That's your I am identity. That doesn't take time. That doesn't take repetition. That doesn't take frequency. But it does when you believe it does, and you argue for your limitations, so you do repeat. You do frequently return. You do, it is, and, and, and so those teachers are not wrong. It is, some, it is about repetition and frequency and emotion. 
but only from the standpoint to, to release and let go of all of those limiting beliefs, all those limitations that you're not the person you desire to be. That's why. But you don't have to go through all that. You can just declare, I am that. Right? It only takes awareness. You only need me. That was clear in that scene from The Chosen. You are the heart and mind, the heart and center of the divine mind. And then you create that physical manifested experience that seems solid. That's what the solid figures mean here, the solid frames of reality. Right? You create that experience, but it's always changing every time you look. That's why, it, that's why it's that every time you look, funny thing about the future, as, as this character Chris Johnson says in the character played by Nicolas Cage in the movie Next, funny thing about the future, every time you look at it, it changes because you looked at it, and that changes everything. Every time you're aware of whatever you're aware of, it changes everything. So there is, so you can argue that, oh yeah, but, it, but I know for five years nothing changed. I know, Tom, I have evidence of that. You don't. You don't know that because there is no five years ago or two years ago or five minutes ago. There's only now. What you're assuming about your identity now changes everything. The way you're looking at yourself in reality right now changes everything. Yes, you can keep arguing that the house isn't here though. It takes time. It, 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 there, there's a thing about time and it, it takes time. It must unfold and, and, it, and it has to unfold until you can keep arguing for that. Keep looking at reality. Keep looking where the house isn't. Keep looking where the money isn't, where the love isn't. Keep looking where the, the, the perfect health isn't. Keep talking about chronic illnesses and terminal illness, illnesses and keep creating them in this current moment. You can say, no, it's been here. I've had this for five years or two years or three years. But you don't know that. You only know what the wit, the, through the identity that you are remembering it now. And, you're, and if you're not remembering it the way you would have liked it to be, if you're not remembering reality the way you would like it to be, if you're not remembering the future the way you would like it to be, you're remembering it wrong. You're looking at it wrong because it's always changing every time you look at it. Every time you remember it, it's changing. Hear that. Every time you remember something, it changes the memory. It changes the, what you believe was your horizontal linear past. It changes what you believe is your horizontal linear future, present. It changes what you believe is your horizontal linear future that never comes. It's all changed in this moment by who you say you are. This is powerful. Fastest and easiest way to change and manifest anything in your life. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Next week, a week from today, a week from this Sunday, I think it's September 1st today. So seven days from now, September 8th, uh, Sunday morning, nine o'clock in the morning, right? Nine o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. I'm going to be coming to you live right here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful with another live event where we're going to be talking about your questions and topics that you've been sending to us at info at be something wonderful.com and answering your questions live right on the chat. That's next weekend on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. We'll announce that later today. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen for uh, being part of our TikTok channel at Be Something Wonderful and really anywhere on social media, you can find us at either Tom Karen or at Be Something Wonderful and for being part of the membership channel. If you're a member, thank you. If you're not a member, check out the link below. We just released a powerful video. One of you said it was the most powerful video that, that you've seen on the channel. So that was just released on the membership channel. You can check that out if you remember. If you're not, check out the link below. We also have the live stream coming that's going to be announced today for next weekend, next Sunday. Creators with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.